Welcome back to Algorithms. So the focus in this course so far has been uh, essentially the following. Here is a problem, for example, sorting, right, sort n numbers. And now here is an algorithm that, that solves the problem. Now let's go, let's go analyze this algorithm and figure out how fast this algorithm is. Um, what we have not focused on is the question, how fast can n numbers be sorted? Right. So we've thought a lot about how to analyze a given algorithm, but we haven't thought too much about how to analyze a given problem and how to think about the set of all algorithms that solve this problem. Because what we'd really like to know in a lot of cases is, is essentially like what is the fastest algorithm for solving a particular problem? Um, and this turns out to be quite a challenging problem to an a, ch a challenging question to answer. So, so in this lecture, we're going to start. We're going to start posing the questions, and we'll answer a couple of them. But we'll start posing the questions that are kind of focused on on this question of how fast can we go. So, you know, we could we can use technical language like what are the lower bounds on algorithm complexity. Um, but what I like to do is I like to say we're going to ask questions of fundamental speed limits in algorithms. So, what are what are the interesting algorithmic speed limits? in a fundamental sense. And to do this, we're going to use the running example of sorting. Okay. So what do we know about sorting so far? Well, we, we know some algorithms for sorting. So, so our, our example running through this will be, will be sorting. So here's the question that I want to ask. How fast can an n element array be sorted? Okay, so let's let's chew on this question and try to understand what this question is doing. So here's our here's our fundamental question for today: is how fast can uh, let's say n numbers be sorted? And you might say, well, I know some of the answers to this, right? I, I know some algorithms that sort n numbers. So those algorithms give me some information about it. So let's think rigorously about what information those known algorithms give us about the answer to this question. Okay. So there's our there's our fundamental question. Now now what do we know? What do we know so far? So here's one way of thinking through the information that we have about about the answer to this question. So I could ask you uh, I could ask you a refined version of this question, and I could ask this. Right, so here's our here's our question prime, right? Our, our sub question: Can n numbers be sorted in cubic time? Right. So can let me say, uh, can n numbers be sorted in big theta of n cubed time? And your answer should be an immediate yes. Okay, so let's let's start to make a table here of the stuff we know. So, for example, we could say, are there is it possible to to sort numbers at least as fast as n cubed, right? And the answer is yes. Okay. So, n cubed does not represent a fundamental speed limit uh, of of uh, of sorting. So, now how do we know? How do we know that n cubed isn't the fundamental speed limit. Well, we have algorithms that sort in n squared. Okay, so so let's rephrase this question a little bit, um, and then start kind of ruling out some some uh, some places that we that we know for sure. So here's instead of asking can n numbers be sorted in n cubed time, let me ask the following: Is is big theta of n cubed the fastest we can sort algorithms? Or sorry, we can sort arrays. Arrays of algorithms, I guess. <laughs> All right, and so now the answer the answer becomes no, right? And how do we know, right? We we can actually rule out n cubed as being this fundamental speed limit of sorting, and and we rule it out by saying we know of algorithms that sort in n squared time. Okay, so this this is this is ruled out. Okay, ruled out as an answer to that question by, for example, uh, any quadratic sorting algorithm. So it's ruled out by selection sort, uh, insertion sort, bubble sort, um, and, and any algorithm that sorts in 
uh, n, n squared time. All right, it's ruled out. So, so we know that n cubed is not the fundamental speed limit of sorting because we have, uh, we have big theta of n squared algorithms that do it. So, so now we can ask, is big theta of n squared the fundamental speed limit of sorting? And we know that it isn't. And why is that? Because we know that there are algorithms that sort in n log n time. So n squared is also not the answer to the question, what is the fundamental speed limit of, of, uh, of of, uh, of uh, sorting, and this is ruled out by, for example, merge sort. Merge sort, right? And how does merge sort rule it out? Well, we know that merge sort has a worst case n log n complexity, right? So we know that n squared is not the answer. So here's another candidate, right? Another candidate is n log n. So this is a possibility, right? Merge sort lives here. So we know that it can that n numbers can be sorted at least as fast as n log n. So we've got merge merge sort here. But what merge sort does not tell us is whether we can go faster. Right? We know that merge sort sorts at least this fast. We know that merge sort doesn't sort as fast as say, you know, here's here's a subtle improvement, big data of n log log n. Right, the logarithm of the logarithm of n. So merge sort does not go here. So, he, the, the, so the question now remains, is it possible to sort as fast as this? Or, or maybe, it's, is it possible to sort in linear time? Or is it possible to sort in logarithmic time? Okay, so, so the fact that merge sort sorts this fast does not give us information about whether there are other algorithms that sort this fast. So as far as we know, so far in the course, these, these are our possibilities, right? It could be possible, as far as we know, to sort uh, an array in, in, you know, in linear time or in logarithmic time, as far as we know, right? Could be possible. And I'm just gonna say, as far as we know, in the course, Turns out that fundamentally CS theory has answered these questions already, and, and we'll answer these today. But but so far in the course, uh, as far as we know, these these could be these could be possible, as we <laughs> know. In the course, let's uh, let's be let's be precise. Okay, so so let's let's kind of start to put some language to this. Okay, so uh, so what we know so far is an upper bound on the complexity of sorting. Okay, so here's, here's our sort of our, our principle. All right, and so you can see upper bound here in this chart. We know, we know that, for example, n cubed is an upper bound on the, on the complexity of sorting. And how do we know this? We have algorithms that go faster than n cubed. We know that n squared is an upper bound because we have algorithms that go faster than n, than n squared. We know n log n is an upper bound, right? It's, a, it's a, an upper bound that a, it, we have algorithms that achieve that exactly, and uh, is an upper bound um, for the complexity of sorting because we have algorithms that achieve that. What we don't know is if n log log n is an upper bound, and we don't know any lower bounds at all so far. So, so what we can say is the, is the following principle. To find an upper bound, on the complexity of, uh, of solving a problem, all we have to do is show an algorithm that runs in that, in that time. So to find upper bound on complexity for a problem, uh, all we have to do is show an algorithm that does this. that runs that fast. Okay, so here's a proposition, right? This is a true proposition, proposition. Uh, big theta of n log n is an upper bound for the time complexity of algorithms sorting, uh, or for the kind of the fastest possible algorithm uh, that, that sorts n numbers. 
Okay, n log n is an upper bound for the fastest sorting algorithm. Okay, so I say this is a proposition, which means it's something that I can prove to be true. What's my proof? Well, my proof is that I have an algorithm that sorts in n log n time. That's it, that's all I need to do to show an upper bound for, for the complexity of algorithms that solve this problem. So my proof is that merge sort is this fast. And there, there I'm done, right? So, I mean, technically speaking, the proof is the proof that merge sort sorts in n log n time. Um, but what we'd like to do is understand how we can go faster. Okay, so what we'd really like to be able to do is find a lower bound on the fastest that we can sort algorithms. Okay, so what do we want? We want a lower bound, right? An upper bound just says we can go at least this fast. A lower bound says, and we can go no faster than fill in the blank. What we want is a lower bound. Okay, so what we'd like to be able to say is that every algorithm for sorting goes no faster, so it's no faster than n log n time, right? We'd like to be able to come up with some way of ruling out these things so that we can say, now we know, we know everything there is to know about the complexity, the time complexity of sorting, sorting in numbers. So we want a lower bound, right? We want to be able to say something like, uh, not only do algorithms exist which go at least this fast, but algorithms do not exist which go faster. So we'd like to be able to say uh, something like, all right, we want to say something along the lines of every algorithm is no faster than let's call it big omega of n, n log n, okay, right? And this would be then a statement that says, um, you know, if I have both an upper bound that says uh, there exists an algorithm that sorts in n log n time, and I can say, and I, and I also know a lower bound that says no algorithm is faster than n log n time, then I know everything there is to know, right? Then I've identified a fundamental speed limit for, for sorting n numbers. So that's what we'd like to do today. We'd like to come up with ways of developing arguments that tell us something about these fundamental speed limits. We'd like to be able to say that every sorting algorithm is, it runs in big omega of n log n time, right? You can't go any faster than this. So let's, let's start exploring this space. Let's start exploring what it would mean to be able to make that claim.